Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this Monday for our product call. Today, we're going to go over, um, we've already done this, the Daily Essentials Pack. So I encourage you to go back onto the YouTube channel and uh, watch the, our, our um, mm -hmm. Zoom on the Daily Essentials sure. Pack, because we're not going to go over all that in detail again. We're just going to highlight a few things um, that are different. Revisions. Revisions with yeah. our Daily Essentials Upgrades, pack. improvements. Correct. Changes. Yes. Alterations. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, but first, our daily essentials pack is you choose either the men's or the women's multivitamin, mm -hmm. your magnesium, and your D3. These can also be purchased separately. They don't have to be done in the pack, but obviously doing the pack, you get a, um, a better deal. So I talk a lot about nutrient deficiencies. Um, we're not getting what we used to get from our food sources, unfortunately. They're just our food, our food sources are not what they used to be. So therefore we can't get the same nutrients out of them. So we end up with all these nutrient deficiencies and it could be just such a simple thing to correct that is what is causing problems within your body, body, mind, stomach, whatever it is. So it's a very simple way to eliminate nutrient deficiencies is with our uh, multivitamin, and we all know the power of vitamin D, right? Mm. It's become very clear through COVID that those that were deficient in vitamin D were the ones that were the sickest. Um, and as well as our magnesium, which is involved in over 300 reactions in the body. So if you don't have the proper amount of magnesium, then those reactions can't take place. So um, the form of magnesium that we have in here, glycinate, gluconate, is, is to target the increase in magnesium in your body. That's the goal, to increase the magnesium levels in your body. Therefore, we're not deficient. All those reactions can take place. So um, designed very well. What, I should have had the price up here just to let you know the um, the, price of the, the price of the three of them, yes. <laughs> but Ryan is also going to go through and tell you what we changed, mm -hmm. our revisions for the better, which is something I'm sure, you know, Ryan will talk about that we always strive to do. We're always going to keep researching and making changes as they, you know, seem fit. If something can improve our supplement, yeah. we are 100% going to do it. All right, I got the price, 27.40. Okay, so member price for three supplements, 27.40. So there really is no excuse not to do the basic. And I always recommend to everybody when they say, where do I start? What I, I'm not, I'm new to supplements, daily essentials pack, you gotta start there. So Ryan, why don't you tell us what we did to change our products for the better? Okay, I will. But before I do, can I just quickly comment on the food density um, or the nutritional density of food? Because you're right, like food's not what it used to be. I, I know like 1950s is a long time ago, but remember they didn't necessarily have that global food um, market that they have now. So, and it sucks. It, it really aggravates me so much that there's no agency out there like making sure that our foods have the nutrient density they should have. So when tomatoes or soybeans or any type of crop is imported from mass, like many, many miles away and they're, they're pulled off the vines prematurely and they're, nobody is treating it because based on nutrient density, they're just strictly treating it on what they consider to be table fare quality, like ready to buy at a supermarket or a grocery store. And you're like, so now you pick it prematurely. So the plant hasn't even had a chance to put all of its nutrients into it. And then you mass transit it, then you gas it or do whatever you do to process it. And that's all, the whole time, as soon as a plant is, as soon as a product is pulled and left on its own and no longer in a living environment, it is degrading. And that's a problem with shelf life. So if you want to talk about nutrient density, the first thing to start to drop out are those really highly sensitive botanicals and, and vitamins and minerals and things. And they nobody's measuring that. Really, it's bullshit. It, it sucks so bad because the foods that are getting to us might look like they're presentable, but they're just void of the nutrients because we're not buying from local farmers like we should be. We're not supporting local markets. We don't have that anymore. It's kind of gone away. And so uh, it's frustrating. It really is frustrating because this is a bold statement, but neither one of us would ever want to sit here and say, you have to take a multivitamin. Like why we would really prefer you say, yeah, you've got a super awesome, well-balanced, uh, you have harmony in your life. You have a good, good relationship with food. You get all your micronutrients that you, you get your testing done by your physician. You know, your system is good to go. And that's just not the case. Right. Not the case. When ninety percent of people are deficient in at least one vitamin and mineral, that's why I say a hundred percent. But even that's based on nu nu micronutrient tests. When you get your vitamin levels checked, you're like, oh, I'm deficient in this, right? I'm deficient in that. And many people don't do the micronutrient right. testing because it's an out of pocket three hundred to four hundred dollar right. expense, right? Um, and it's also forever changing, so you know, it's not just like a one time deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we get our vitamin D tested very easily, so if you're not getting a test for yeah. that, your doctor a hundred percent need to. And then with magnesium, it's not always reflective of it because you would have to really do like a muscle 
biopsy to get the true level of oh, it's not much spit in the level. blood, yeah. Most of it is bone and tissue. Yeah. Most of your magnesium is deposited. Yeah. Right. So when they do the test, it's from our blood. So it's not really a true, yeah, you know, reflection. Difficult. So yeah. we don't really go and do a muscle biopsy. True statement. So yeah, yeah we did make some improvements because we listened to you guys. And like Lisa said, we are researching. We're willing to, to improve wherever we can. I'm not going to sit here and say that what we had was bad for you. I don't believe that at all. But I still believe this is an improvement. So sure. what does that all mean? So we, like Lisa said, there's a, a revised. All of them have been revised except for the magnesium. Because guess what? The magnesium is just magnesium, glycinate, and gluconate. That's all that's in it. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but these three here... The, these three here have been altered, okay? So the women's, the men's, and the D3 and K2. The primary revision was based on the inactive ingredients or otherwise known as excipients. They each, all, all of them had what was considered a glidant or a lubricant or an anti-caking agent. These are really primarily for like the manufacturing process so that the powders just don't start to cake or to clump and jam up the machine and capsules aren't getting what they should be having in them and the, not you know, homogenous mixture and all that stuff. So what, what they were using prior to, to our change was um, microcrystalline cellulose. They were using silica and magnesium stearate. And some people have talked back and said, look, we really don't want those in the product. Is there anything else we can do? And there is. So we found, I think we're one of the very few, very, very few brands that have this. If, I mean, I haven't really seen anybody doing it to the extent we are, but we found an organic certified USDA organic rice hole. So it's from rice, non-GMO project. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's soy-free. It's obviously USDA certified organic. And so it acts as a glidant. It replaces that. It helps the machine move. It actually is a source of fiber, but again, it's in such minimal amounts. It's not really, doesn't really pertain to these products, but again, it's nice. It's a clean label. What I always talk about, Lisa talks about, is trying to provide the most clean label, um, less is more kind of mindset. So super cool, super stoked on those improvements. All right, now on the vitamin E on both the multi for men and women, I don't know if you can see these. Um, for a long time, we were looking back and we we're trying to find a natural form of vitamin E that was stable. And the only way we could really source it was this viscous li liquid. But we did find, have found now a powder form of vitamin D, a natural vitamin E, sorry. It's a D-alpha tocopherol. Prior to the revision, we were using DL um, alpha tocopherol, which is a racemic mixture of the D and the L isomers. What does that mean? It means that it's synthetic. It, it means that it's a synthetic source, but it was standardized in units. So we were making sure that at least we were getting a proper amount of vitamin E um, due to the fact that it was standardized. But again, listening to everybody, researching more, we found a stable form. I do believe that a lot of vitamins on the market are using a D alpha tocopherol form, which is the natural form that is probably not very stable. And there might be some issues there, but nonetheless, we I, I did choose a good brand product on that. So we made that improvement as well, which again, I hope that makes a lot of people happy. It makes me happy to be able to make improvements. Yeah. All right, uh, anything else in here? Oh, by the way, we're still using the methylated forms of B12 and folate. So um, you might see a label change, but it's okay. They're, they're still the same L methylated forms. All right, and then the vitamin D3K2, we did the same thing. We got rid of microcrystalline cellulose, got rid of the silica and got rid of the mag stearate. And so now we're using organic rice fiber in the vitamin D3K2 as well. Right. And then a little change to... Um, oh, small change. Yeah, small change yeah. to the factor four. So it used to be... Um, the gel cap itself was made from bovine and porcine. porcine. Yeah. Now it's strictly a bovine, bovine from the hoof. Yeah. Yeah. So we were able to remove the porcine, which I know in Muslim populations, oh, uh, you yeah. know, that's very important. So we were able to do that. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing too. The rice fiber is, it's halal, it's kosher. Um, like I said, GMO, non-GMO project, uh, USD organic. It has like literally all the certs. I mean, right. it's, it's clean. It's a nice product. Yeah. So um, 